Denise. All of this. All of this. We we see this glorious occasion. Uh-huh. This divine event of, of David's life. We we see this is one of David's uh, greatest successes coming back to Jerusalem with the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, but what we sometimes fail to uh, realize is that this greatest success uh, has a foundation uh, that has become one of David's greatest failures. Mm. <laughs> He had, comes in dancing and, and shouting, and we preach all of that, and we'll preach that again, but I hope you can see it in a different light by the time we're at the end of it. Because uh, what has just happened previously in the same chapter is that the Bible records that there was a man by the name of Uzzah. That David was uh, recently, three months earlier approximately, was bringing the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. And Uzzah had placed his hand on it. And he died. And he died. And he died. And what's interesting here is David has, at before, right before the death of Uzzah, David has just finally become the king of Israel. He is, he is doing his best to unite the people of God. Uh, because Judah and Israel were separate at time at the time. And so David was not only anointed as the king of Judah, but the king of Israel. And so now he is trying to unite a group of people that have had their separate issues. The Bible records that he grabs 30 chosen men uh, from Israel and goes down to Bel Judah to take back the ark of God. Uh, but what's so significant about this is because David has realized he has grew up his whole life. 17 years earlier, he had been anointed to be the king. But during that time that he was anointed to be the king, the ark of, the, of God was not present in Jerusalem, which was being known as the city of David. And so forth. David's whole life, uh, the ark of God has been gone. It had been lost through uh, times earlier because of the disobedience of, of the God. And, and so even though they were the children of God, uh, there was no presence of God, which in turn, there was no power of God. They may have had a position, but there was no power present for the position. And there is no use to hold a position if you don't have no power to hold it. Do you hear what I'm saying tonight? So many people are trying to get the position and then acquire the power. But it don't work that way. you got to first have the power to be successful in the position. Do you hear me tonight? And so David is wanting to go down. He said, because I want the presence of God back. I want the glory back because I'm, I'm sick. I'm sick of Ichabod. He said, I, I've been to his birthday parties. I know when he graduated. I know who he married. I'm tired of seeing Ichabod because when the presence of God had departed, uh, there was a boy that was named and his name was Ichabod, which meant the presence has gone or departed. And so every year that Ichabod lived was another year that the presence of God had been gone from Israel. And David finally said, I'm about to, I'm about to kill Ichabod because I'm tired of having no presence. So you might feel me tonight. I, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm tired of going to church and having no presence. Do you feel me? I, I, I'm tired of hearing preachers and having no presence. I'm tired of hearing singers and having no presence. I need the presence of God in my life. I need I, I need the presence of God. And so David here has the right motives. He has a, a goal. One of his things that he wants to do. One of his legislative orders that he wants to have uh, installed and, and, and done is to receive and get the ark of God. And so the Bible records he gets 30,000 men, goes down to, to Bel Judah and he grabs the ark of the covenant and he's on his way back. Uh, and even though this is uh, the right thing uh, to do, there is also a right way to do it. Amen. You can do the right thing the wrong way and end up with a bad situation. Do you, do you hear me tonight? I know this may get rough tonight, you know, because y'all want to dance, but y'all dancing a little bit. I'm going I'm to preach while I'm here. Is that all right? There's a right thing to do, but that, that you can do it the, the wrong way. And the reason sometimes that we have the right motives, but we do it the wrong way is we have not done our homework. 
We have not done our research because David is anointed to be king. Yes, he has the crown on. Yes, but just because he is the king and just because he is anointed, he does not know the law and the order to carry the presence of God. Right. And so he feels like, well, I'm on a roll. I've already taken over the city of Jerusalem. We came up through the water gate and we've taken back our city. I'm on a roll. And so since I'm on a roll here in this part of my life, I'm just going to go ahead and keep rolling over here. And what he thought would work did not work. That's right. Do you hear me tonight? Do you hear what I'm saying? And because preparation is the key to unlocking the door of success. Amen. And David hasn't done the right amount of preparation just yet because he is trying to go and get the ark of God by his own strength and his own might. By his, by his own power he is trying to go by. And Zechariah later writes that, that it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. David is trying to go in and get the ark of God and so he goes down and he gets it and if you was to look at it from an analytical point of view you would want to ask why why was the, why was this so bad why did God let us uh, die because there is a protocol to carrying the presence of God the first thing that was wrong with this whole system is when they go down there they take the ark of God and they put it on a cart a cart a, a cart that's made of boards and big wheels and that was never the intention of the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant's first intentions was to be placed on a pole system and placed upon the shoulders of the priest and have them walk through and where they walked you could not, you wasn't looking at the priest but you seen the Ark which was the presence. But now what David has done has taken the Ark out of its rightful place and have placed it at eye level. To where only a few that is around can see the ark. Yes, yes. It wasn't 300 that went down to Bel Judah. It was 30,000 that is with David. And so now they cannot see the ark of God. And what gets us in trouble is when we try to bring God to our level. Instead of going up to his, I feel like preaching, is that all right? Well, what, what gets us in trouble, the first thing that gets God a little upset with us is when we're trying to pull him down to our level. And someone will say to me tonight, but God inhabits the praises of his people. That is true, but praise is never here. Praise is always up here. So what God is saying, I meet you where you meet me. In other words, I I just don't come down to you and you just don't come up to me but when you praise me we meet in a place where I can do my best work can you shout amen so, so they're in a place and let me hurry up and teach tonight and then I'll, I'll, I'll get you up out of there they're in this place and uh, and they have it on a cart somebody say a cart a cart a cart now, now what is a cart made out of a cart is made out of boards and big wheels right that's what a card is made out of. I'm country. I know. You, 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 you want to make a simple cart, get you some boards together, make some wheels, stick it on there with an axle, and it can go wherever you want it to go. All right. All right. And they're trying to carry the presence of God on, on boards and big wheels. Sounds like the modern day church. We're trying to carry the presence of God on our deacon boards. Whoa. On our singing boards. On our administrative board. I'm preaching good now. Y'all be quiet all you want to, but I'm going to preach on it. And we're also trying to carry it on big wheels. Who's got the most money? Come on. Yeah. Preach on. I'm going to. But you cannot carry the presence of God on what you have created. It don't work that way. The only way that God's presence shows up in the right manner is when you do it His way and not your way. Do you hear me tonight? They're trying to, to bring the ark of God in on boards and big wheels and so now they cannot see. They cannot see. They cannot see the ark. They hear the praise and so really the praise that is first happening on this first event is not about the ark of God but it's 
about the accomplishment of David. Everybody is excited. Oh, we went and got the ark. We've done something that hadn't been done in years. We finally done something. And so the hype and the praise was not about who God was in the ark, but it was about what David and they had done. And that is the second mistake. Not only when you pull God down into a level that he's not supposed to be, but then you begin to praise your own works instead of praising the God that gave you the works, then you are in alignment for trouble. Do you hear what I'm saying tonight? What you must realize is I can't do nothing without God in my life. And so when I go to praise him and I go to lift up God, it's nothing that I have done, but it's all that he has to look at someone and say, look what the Lord has done. Look, 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 look what the Lord has done. Look what God has done. See, what is happening here is the ark now is down in the cart. They are pulling the cart with oxen and nobody can see it. There's a lot of noise being made, but 30,000, everybody don't know what really happiness and joy is happening and we don't find David in the picture. He wants to let somebody else pray because he's caught up on himself, on his own accomplishment, on what he's done, on how great he is. I'm preaching good tonight. I'm preaching well. I, I try, I'm trying to help you because pride cometh before a fall. And so now, not only is the cart in the wrong place, and not only is the people praising for the wrong reason, but the reason the ark needed to be on the poles and carried by the priest is because if you want the presence of God, you got to work for it. Yes. Yes. Because when you put something on your shoulders and you begin to walk, there's weight that's upon you. The way that we're going was trying to make it easy, trying to make it convenient. And if you always try to build the presence of God on convenience, there'll be a lot of times you ain't going to have it. Can somebody say amen? How many times have you had to come in here, you had to work to push your praise? Come on, talk to me tonight. That, that you had to. But after you begin to carry that weight of glory, something begins to happen in the midst because it's not convenient. See, I found out something. If it's convenient all the time then it, and it's not tested, then how do you know that it's real? Because the true presence of God comes with that weight. It comes with the glory. It comes with something that you've got to be willing to carry and that's why a lot of church folk don't want to have the presence because they're lazy they don't want to carry the presence of God they don't want to read their Bible they don't want to fast they don't want to pray they don't want to seek the face of God but if you really want the presence of God you've got to be willing to put it on your shoulders and say this may be heavy and it may not be easy and it may not be hard, but if I can get into his presence, if I can get where the glory is, if I can lift him up, all of my enemies shall be scattered. What they didn't realize is that when they put the cart, the ark in the cart, then the enemy was going to come in. But as soon as they lifted up the ark and put it, not only for them to see, but for all their enemies to see, then the enemies would think, oh, I better not mess with them today because they're not by themselves. See, when you can really begin to praise God and you really begin to lift him up, it not only lets you know where God is, but it lets the enemy know where God is. And when the enemy knows that God is present among you and he's higher than you, then the enemy twice. So shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, I believe I'm going to praise it tonight. It's not just for your benefit. It's not just for my benefit. But it's letting the devil know you're messing with the wrong believer. You're messing with the wrong Christian. You're messing with the wrong Holy Ghost feel. Fire baptized believer. Because I've got something in me that's lifting up a hill. Oh, 
Uh, so here they go now. Uh, uh, they don't understand that now, now the thought process is good. But they're doing it the wrong way. And so now they get to the cone stretching forward. And when they get there, the Bible says that the, the cart stumbles. And the ark begins to fall. And Uzzah stretches out his hands to try to hold up the ark of God. And when he does it, the Bible says that God gets mad and kills us on the spot. Now think about what is happening. Everybody is dancing. Everybody is happy. They don't know why, but they are. They're all watching David. And now a holy hush creeps in. Nobody beating the drum. Nobody beating the cymbal. Nobody shouting. Nobody dancing. And everybody's now looking at David. Think about how embarrassing that had to be. Not 30 people. 30,000 people. Woo! Now looking at David. And David is feeling embarrassed because he don't know what to do. Oh, have you ever been there before? Didn't know what to do. Yeah. Felt embarrassed. Yeah. Been talking about how good God is. Yeah. How powerful God is. And then you start going through something that you did not expect. Yeah. Oh, and it make you question this God that you serve. You might know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking nobody ever been through anything. But, but, but I've been through some things that I didn't think I'd ever have to go through. To find myself, Bishop, going through that because it's not nothing that uh, that I expected in the journey. Woo, Jesus. All right. It, 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 it. And this part messes with David. Now, now we know that, that David ends up fulfilling what God wanted him to fulfill and what God wanted him to do. But this right here, it stops or, or, or slows down. It don't necessarily stop, but, but it slows the thought process down. And David has to stop and reconsider what's going on. Everybody looking at him. And so David is, is confused, is scared and mad. The Bible records that he looks at him and says, I'm not taking it to my house. I'm not taking it to Jerusalem. Let, let's go to Obed-Edom's house. We're, we're going to drop it off there. I'm going home. Because, because I, I, I don't understand why God would do this. Have you ever been there before? Yes. That, that's the confusing part that David is in. It wasn't that the Philistines or the Ammonites or the Canaanites had killed us, but it was God. Right. Yeah. Ooh. Right. Have you ever had to deal with something that God did? All right. All right. All right. Has God ever done anything to you that you didn't think he'd do? Can, can I keep talking to you tonight? Have you ever had to deal with something that, that you didn't understand what was happening, what is going on? That, that's why David said at times, how long is it going to be before I hear from you? When, when are you going to move? I, I don't understand your ways. Don't understand your thoughts. You're doing something different than I have ever experienced before in my life. David is at this place. The ark is at Obed Eden's house. David is in his house. And he's wondering what is going on. But see, what David should have realized that even though that what to us uh, happened, and, and it's sure it, it hurt us, it's, it's something that, that he should have realized. It kind of something that happened to me the other day. I went back home to see mom and dad on the way to a service. I was running a little bit late, and I got to Boone, North Carolina, and, and, and that's my hometown. But I, I got there at the wrong time, and everybody and his brother had come to town at the same time. And... Uh, I had to get filled with the Holy Ghost again. Let's just put it that way. We'll leave it at that. I, I, mean, I, I mean, I'm trying to whip in and out of traffic. People blowing the horn. I'm trying. I, I got to get somewhere. I got to go see mom and dad, and then I got to go to another service. And, and so I decided to go down a back road. And when I, when I went down this back road uh, for years of growing up in Boone, uh, it was a place we'd always just sped down to get somewhere and to get out. But as I started going down through there, uh, since the last time I had traveled this road, uh, there had been something placed there called speed bump. Man, I own that for 
worse when I took me a good trip, is all I got to tell you. I said, oh, Lord. I said, God, I'm, I, 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 don't, don't give me no wings. Not just yet, Lord. I didn't. I didn't know. And so I, and I had to keep going to those speed bumps. And every time there was a bunch of them in there. And it slowed me down. Bishop, it slowed me down. And when I go over, it, the ride was rough. I bounced up and down and around. I heard the tires beating and, and the ride was rough. But what I realized about the speed bump, even though it slowed me down, and even though it made the ride rough, it didn't stop me from reaching my destination. I come to tell somebody tonight that there may be a speed bump in your life right now. You may be dealing with something that you don't know how to explain and it may be rough and it may be tough, but you got to realize that this thing ain't been put in front of you to stop you. It's just been put there to wake you up and realize that you're on the right track. Tell somebody, say, neighbor, I'm on the right track. I'm on. I'm on the right track. David is dealing with the speed bump. He leaves the ark of God at Obed-Edom's house. Now, Obed-Edom didn't ask for the presence, but when David comes by and says, I'm going to give you the ark, Obed-Edom opens up his door to the ark of the covenant. When he opens up the door to the ark of the covenant, David goes home and pouts for three months. He stays in Jerusalem, and the Bible says that Obed-Edom's house is being blessed by the presence of God. Not because of how much money he had. Not because of what kind of car he drove. Not because of what kind of house he lived in. The reason he was being blessed was because of the presence of God. And I found out all I need is the presence of God. Do you hear me tonight? Does anybody hear what I'm saying? All I've got to do is open up my doors to the presence. See, what Obed-Edom was doing, he wasn't looking for no praise. He was trying to impress nobody. But when the presence showed up, he said, well, since it's here, I might as well get my blessing. And tonight, somebody may have came. You may not come looking for a blessing. You may not be hard for a blessing. But I come to tell you, get ready for a blessing. Shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, I'm about to get my blessing. Not because of what I try. Not because of what I wear. Not because of what my last name is. But because Jesus is living on the inside. Tell somebody, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city. And I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed going. And I'm blessed coming.
Hittite is from Gath, which means that he has a Philistine heritage. Pastor Clara, he shouldn't even have the Ark of God, Bishop. It should have not even been at his house. He was not an Israelite. He was supposed to be his blessing. See, the blessing that Obed-Edom got was David's blessing. But Obed-Edom said, if you don't want it, I'll just take it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you don't want it, I'll take it. If you don't want your healing, I'll take it. If you don't want your deliverance, I'll take it. If you don't want your joy, I'll take it. Somebody's hand and say, neighbor, draw back from your 
I gotta praise. I gotta praise. Look at 